Hey everyone, welcome to the Zia Wool Studio Buzz podcast episode, I think 57. This is a podcast about knitting and about the fiber arts and my name is Doc and I am coming to you from Albuquerque in the beautiful desert of New Mexico. You may have noticed there was a larger than normal gap between episode 57 in German and this one. And I normally don't tell you about my crazy tech problems, but in this case, I just have to tell you, I had a computer meltdown, which resulted in a dog meltdown. And well, you know these things take time as you probably can imagine and sure enough in the process the finished and edited episode was completely gone which sucked the life out of me because i always enjoy making these i enjoy editing them and putting in all the information so when it was gone oh my gosh it was just terrible okay but whatever we all get over these things and so here I am again and I wanted to start off by showing you a piece of garment that I have made several years ago. It is something that I have designed myself. I have made many of these also in a wide variety of colors and yarns for my daughter when she was little. Now she's too sophisticated for hand knits. Whatever that means, she, she wouldn't wear it anymore. But uh, I brought it because I thought you probably would love to see this. It is a short shrug. The pattern is published on Ravelry. It's made with uh, thick needles and um, I think probably needle size six millimeters or maybe even larger. And what I like about this is that it's just a fast knit top down. It gets closed in the front with just one button and it's a very easily adjustable. So you could even without doing more increases on the neckline in the front, you could just continue straight down and have a longer cardigan or make it a long sleeve one with um, sleeve decreases. In my case, I used three yarns held together one of them being a German yarn and the fuzzy and no it's not mohair because if you've been here before you may remember that I d just mohair itches me and so this one is a microfiber super soft and the um, dark purple that I held with that is a slubby cotton yarn from a local company but sadly they closed down and then also there's a glitter yarn which i think was added by that local company and it's just this one it's just a little bit more dressy than the other ones that i have which is kind of nice when you wear something pretty in the evening and you just go to a nice restaurant whatever and need to throw something on over your um, strap uh, top or dress whatever it is the thing is if you want to make this I'm not sure how suitable it is if you are larger chested and because you would have to make it longer for sure but maybe also then work some decreases here it's not that it's impossible but i as far as i remember this was one of my first patterns that i published and that's the way it is it's a very basic pattern that doesn't give you a lot of sizes and um also the schematic is kind of like <laughs> this drawn thing that i took a picture of so it's very 
I don't know. It's just very basic. I mean, it's great. You can do it. And like I said, I've made many of these, but um, don't expect a super fancy pattern if you like it, if you want to make your own. But I don't want to say that it's a bad pattern. So it's cheap also. So something to play with. Mm, I also will not continue wearing this because since we spoke last we've had summer arriving here like full-blown summer and I am it's a little bit later in the day I have my fan going there which is nice but still it's too hot to be in a cardigan so I will take it off and then we will be back okay here we are again. What have I been doing last week? I must say that I've tackled a few things that made me very content and happy because I tackled them successfully. And so one of them uh, was the True Friend by Vera Valimaki. You may recall that I ended up with a major mistake, which um, if you know the pattern, or let me just show you where I am right now. I'm going to start with the construction of this because then it's easier for you to understand if you've missed um, me talking about this. So you start with the neckline, then you work essentially, you knit two bibs in the front and in the back, then you pick up stitches on the side around um, on the front and the back and you continue continuously work around the front and the back. So only when I had the whole sweater essentially done except for those short sleeves that's when I closed the seams and I noticed not even it wasn't even the first seam it was all done one seam closed perfect the other seam I'm getting to the end and my stitches were completely off and I'm talking not just one stitch, which I could have fixed easily, but three or four. So major disaster. So I threw this thing in a corner. I knew I would have to kind of mentally prepare myself to deal with it at another time. And that's what I did this week. I didn't want to wait too, too long because I knew then my momentum would be gone. I would lose interest maybe and also I would I didn't want to completely re familiarize myself with the pattern if I stopped like for half a year or so so I I picked it up again I tried to figure out where my mistake was and I couldn't quite see it but what I think what must have happened is that I really just miscounted on one of those sides in the front or in the back. And that, of course, um, then messed up everything. The funny thing is that the stitch count for this piece always stays the same because you decrease on the top and you increase on the bottom so as long as you have counted right one time you're good to go and I did check I always I, d I had done all my increases and decreases correctly so it was just super sad I was on a zoom call with my uh, local um, friends my uh, book club and my knitters and as I was uh, ripping back and it took me a long time I think at least one hour probably longer and I got these two balls and I'm just glad I just counted over and over and over again when I picked up the stitches 
and now I and I did before I ripped back I tried it on one more time just to see how the width worked and now I am on my fourth I was on the fourth I did fourth I did four brown stripes and I need 13 so this is very TV suitable and um, all those increases and decreases they're really easy to do you don't need to like mark off a list or anything like that you just because it's so easily seen that you just can't really miss it yep that is my true friend by Vera Valley Mackey another thing that I worked on last week and I'm just gonna hold it briefly into the camera is um, my second sock for the pair that I'm making for my husband in Zia Wool's Taos a, a superwash Coriadale blend in a one-of-a-kind colorway hopefully next week I'm gonna be done with these because like I said it's the second so that's a good thing what I picked up also an older project is uh, the shawl that I am making for my mom which I wanted to bring her like I always bring her something handmade for Mother's Day when we travel to Germany however this year it's doesn't look like it's gonna happen so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do if I mail it or I just keep it until we see each other again so it's just a long rectangular shawl Damien by Iglin's crafts I think is it is the designer name and I am using Zia Wool's Santa Fe which is a mom worthy wonderful 50 50 merino silk blend and this is the colorway juniper and it's really I just it's just feels very very soft and very very nice and and delicate and I know she's gonna love it and she's gonna yeah it's going to be a nice thing to have on your neck super soft that's for sure and it lives in my bag from my friend melody and i love this this is such a great size look you guys it has pockets on the inside love the handle drawstring as you can see so that's wonderful I pulled out something else because one of the um, one of the podcast and one of the podcasts that I watched the 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 question came up what is your oldest work in progress and um, it was kind of funny because I had already pulled mine out the days before because this is kind of a good time to do these neglected things and so I thought hmm, maybe I, I'm gonna finish this now and so so I pulled it out and I figured out why I abandoned it but let me tell you a few things about it so this is the leaves and waves shawl by cat cat coil and you use two colors of mohair you know where this is going already probably mohair not so much my thing 
I'm telling you, I used to love mohair. I still love mohair. It's just not for me to wear because it itches me. But I mean, I can, uh, by the way, I can knit with it easily. It doesn't bother me at, at all. It's just when I wear it. So this will be a gift for someone. One part is done, provisional cast on, and I put the stitches on hold where I was finished with it. And then for the other piece, sorry about the crinkling of my bag, I used this dark gray ash stone with pink and hints of uh, blues it's just a very pretty color again provisional cast on and here is where i stopped and yes that's all the yarn I had of this first skein, but I do have a second one and I'm gonna show you where it came from. I'm just not sure. I used to love their fibers, love their yarns, bought, bought something from them every year at Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival, however this This last time when I was in Maryland, they weren't there anymore. So that was a little bit sad. I would have loved to see them. And if you look at the colorway closely, you see right away, it's not the same. So I'm not sure if I bought it for just because I thought it was pretty or what happened here but it's definitely missing this berry pink that's in the other one i wrote something down in ravelry about the project and i i think i wrote that the colors don't match and for some i don't know if i didn't realize that or if i didn't know i would need that much yarn whatever i will still continue with this because it's not that bad i mean whatever it's just not gonna have the pink it doesn't matter but um let's see can you see it's hard for me to see because i have a very bright background behind you but um yeah so that is my oldest work in progress which by the way i haven't told you i think i started in 2007 which makes it 13 years old not could be so much worse right so it's okay it's okay so yes soon i i also i did no i didn't tell you what really big needles think it's five millimeters and also what else I wrote down that I had or maybe I didn't write down maybe that's the thing that I remembered that I had a little bit of trouble with the instructions which is probably more me not being that good with my knitting English at that time this was my leaves and waves shawl so the other thing um, that i really loved doing last week was that i finished my hap and i put it on the hap stretcher you oh wait a second it's over here and it's behind the yarn what the heck hold on it's just yeah what can i say i loved making it 
I loved putting it on the half stretcher. It was not hard at all. And I think it really looks beautiful. The one thing that I would do differently is I made the mistake of cutting the cotton that I threaded through the lace tips. And I actually, I had, I ended up having two long pieces of cotton. So one side and then on the other side and I tied ribbons at the corners but still I thought I'll just undo the ribbon and then I'll have more more yarn available but um, they were still too short so I and I thought I would have to do it before I wash the hat but actually it was not hard to thread more cotton yarn through even when it was wet. So there's only one problem. It's so beautiful. I don't want to take it down. <laughs> I bet you're not surprised at all. You probably would feel the same. I'm sure about it. <laughs> yeah, that's my hap, the Hansel hap by Gudrun Johnson. Beautiful pattern. I made it with five millimeter needles and it was really not hard, not so, not a huge amount of knitting, not a hard pattern. And um, I made mine with all hand spun yarns. And the gray is Shetland wool. Yes, my hap is done. Very, very wonderful. I also had mentioned uh, two weeks ago that I got back into rug hooking. So I thought that I was going to work on a project for my daughter, which was her uh, uh, drawing that I converted into a rug hook, into a rug hooking project, a little mat that I want to make. However, when I thought about it later and I thought about priority, priorities and what would be best, I realized that I had something more urgent to finish. And that was a friendship rug, or I should say two friendship rugs, which is a project with a friend who lives in Virginia. She started us on the project and we've been supposedly shipping them, working on them a little bit and then shipping them back and forth. So each one of us adds a little bit of something to the rug, sends it to the other and does not know what the other one is going to add to the rug because I mean, it, it evolves as we work on it. And I've had them here for a long, long time. I may have talked about that last time. So I tackled these two mats. They're not gonna be huge, but I remember that my initial problem and why I, the reason why I put them aside was really that I had no idea what am I gonna add to them next now as it's my turn. And then you put something away and then of course you are not going to have an idea then if you don't look at it. Now when I pulled them out it was so crystal clear what I'm going to put on and that was on the one rug I put I wanted to put something I wanted to add something joyful and cheerful and beautiful colors and so I added a field of flowers with a green background and on the other one it already had the words um, beauty and love in a heart and the peace symbol and of course it had to be hope at this time right now what a great reminder also in the long run of what we had to go through um, during the, a part of the time as they were made 
So I shipped them off to my friend and she, was, <laughs> she texted me and she said, she said, you know, I did not faint. <laughs> so I thought she, she might faint. <laughs> that these things actually are still existing and came back to her. No, she was just happy. And so that's great. In the meantime, then I had to find another project because the nice thing is that every Friday, my rug hooking guild gets together on a zoom call and we all hook and so i really had my mind set on planning something that i could work on and it's actually something that i put up i've put up in the house on a wall for me in the last days to kind of um, do what i did with those friendship rugs kind of prepare myself mentally to uh, work on it to kind of re-familiarize myself with the design and to possibly get ideas for the color planning because of course everything that I had talked about a few years ago as I worked on it in actually two classes um, that was just too long ago and I did have some wool fabric set aside that I had meant to use in it and what I'm talking about is a rug that I have been making after a drawing of my son or a painting of my son it was a pastel painting that he made in seventh grade and he I brought it for you the a copy of the original And I do remember that they had a bird in class to draw from. I think the art teacher owned this. I don't know. How can you own a bird like that? I'm not so sure. Can't remember. But it was just um, then he he added the I think f the fastest bird the fastest of the birds or something. I have to look at the original. So what I wanted to do is, of course, I wanted to enlarge it, have it slightly bigger, and also turn it into a, an actual rug. So I altered the shape. I made it a rectangle and I'm gonna show you now. So like I said, I pulled it out to work on and now I can show you which is gonna be great because you can see how big this thing is and how far I am already I hope you can see it like this so the um you i finished some of the sections do down here this morning while i was talking to my rug hooking friends and um, i cut a lot of uh, strips already in various shades of greens and also dark red and i already planned to put this green up here and in that bottom corner and I'm kind of I start having an uh, idea on how or ideas on how I will continue and um, with this I haven't decided on whether I'm going to put the some writing in the border and I haven't decided on a color yet either but I was thinking it's a nice thing to work on now because my son's 21st birthday is coming up. I don't think it would be realistic to hope to get it done for him for then, but I can work on it and think of him and kind of put some motherly love <laughs> into this. It's gonna be a really nice size and hopefully he's gonna um, use it for many years to come yep I know that I remember I remember working on this flower in a class that I took as well as this leaf here 
and um, it was that was all a new technique because I could hook um, in solid colors. I mean, I could pull my loops; it was all okay. But to actually be a little more fancy with the colors and also to have a dimensional flower like this, that was really something new and fun to do in a class. That is my rug hooking and I brought some yarns that I wanted to show you because I have something else that will jump on my needles soon and I have talked about it before. It's the shawl, A Mother's Prayer. Debbie, Reese and Amy inked Indigo on Ravelry, I think, as well as Instagram. Those two always put out a new pattern for Mother's Day. And it's, I believe it's always a mystery knit along. And this year they have, because of the situation that we're in, to do something good for the community, Debbie has made the pattern a free pattern. So through Debbie Reese, uh, you can find the shawl on Ravelry and get your copy of the pattern for free. You will need two colors, two skeins of yarn, one of them better a little bit more solid because you're going to make some kind of a lacy section with it and the other one is more of a pattern. And it's kind of cool because I had this, this was my Winslow yarn from the retreat that I designed and that everybody had in the goodie bag. And I meant to combine it with another colorway, but then all of a sudden I dyed up this and I thought, oh my goodness, it, these two have to come together and I am sure you will agree. I just love the combination. It's very me. I'm going to keep this one. It's not going to be for mom because she's going to get the green one and this is really very much me. So I'm looking forward to this one. I have not yet started my lace cardigan I talked about that last time it's a cardigan that I yes it's called a late it's called lace is the pattern name I talked about it before it is something that I want to make with my own hand spun in a natural color and I I'm right now at a point where I really am totally uncertain on what to do I am um, I wanted to knit from the top down to make it a long cardigan and to be able to use up all the yarn that I have. But now a friend told me, hey, are you crazy? Knit it the way the pattern is written and stop messing around with it. But at that point I had already done all the math. So now I'm in this state where I'm I completely undecided and I don't know what I'm going to do. So we shall see. By the next time you see me, I uh, hopefully have made a decision. Another thing that I wanted to mention is um, something about um, knitting, uh, about spinning and about fiber prep. For one, do not do what I do, did when I showed you how I comb my wool because as my friend Sherry, thank you for that, um, made me aware of that I was reaching over the wool combs. So it's kind of like a suicide miss mission because you reach over those wool combs, combs which are so crazy sharp. And so I was reaching over to get to my wool to put it on my comb don't do that and please be careful those things are sharp they are 
essentially weapons. I have now put mine up over here where you cannot um, see it, but I have them on a different surface and I've tried. So that is going to work very well where I put them up right now. And, um, but I haven't done any more. And I think I showed you the little sample skein that I had spun up. I have started spinning on that fiber bump that I still had from Maryland Sh Sheep and Wool Festival two years ago. And um, that's what I'm working on, but I'm not far along. So I didn't even take the bobbin down. And uh, the yarns that I have right next to me are some that I did want to show you uh, because they will go to the shop shortly. And one colorway is one of my beekeepers that everybody loves on the Sundancer base. That would be this one. This is the beekeeper in the garden. And that is the other one. This is the beekeeper's best friend with the purple. One is a custom order. The other one will also go in the sh in, into the shop. This one is again, the beekeeper in a garden on a different base, but there is a new beekeeper in town. I have created a new beekeeper colorway. I am, I don't even know. Sometimes they just come to my head and I try and if it works out and I like it, then it's going to be a new colorway. And in this uh, case, I was pretty sure that I would like it and I love how it turned out. So we have now the beekeeper in the woods with all those dark and strong greens. This one is as well as the other one that I have dyed, and I've only dyed up two of them. This is on my towel space, the Superwash Corydale Nylon Blend that I love so much for socks. And here is another new one where I, it doesn't have a name yet. I thought I had one and then my family said, nope that name doesn't work you gotta find something different and i listen to my family so <laughs> this one will also be in the shop and is waiting to be named because i just love it and wrote down everything about it a new colorway and now let me look around a moment here I do not think I am oh I did want to mention yes in regards to the shop still all the yarns in the shop are currently marked down to make your knitting with a special hand dyed yarn more affordable because we all need some fun things to do right now and hopefully we're headed to an improvement of our current situation <laughs> but um so everything is on sale all the yarns are on sale still and will be for a while but i just added all of my project bags to the shop and all of those are marked down as well i did want to mention uh, real quick how I make my project bags is um, I, I I think I'm kind of a I, I just love the combination of different fabrics so usually I have a front and a back in different different fabrics I have three standard sizes and I sometimes occasionally make square sock bags and um, yeah, the smallest size is for socks and the largest is for sweaters. And what's in the shop is a lot of sock bags and I'm gonna go through them just real quick so you get an idea. But I also wanted to mention that 
almost all of them have a handle that's long enough to, to carry the bag on your wrist and they are all of my bags i have a cotton or a rayon velvet on the inside of this strap i do not put interfacing in because i'm not very good at it and i i feel like i would compromise that they're washable and so the way i make them they're very washable and i have pets and maybe you do too and then you need to wash these things a lot at times so i have my little label on the inside and on the inside also i use something coordinating and um, uh, it's usually a flannel fabric so this is one for the love of elephants i'm just going to do this real quick just so you get an idea of what i make all of these are currently there cowboy theme lizards and new mexican chilies sheep that was really an earth day bag with the trees and neutral background usually it's a kind of like a theme on one side and then the other side is um, something neutral with the occasional exceptions like here you get the zombies on both sides and this one also has my logo on the outside I stopped doing this I this is the last one that I have where it's on the outside cameras and knitting stitches for the writing for the writers out there bird lovers so this is one of those where it's an exception i cannot put this on my wrist maybe you could i could probably force it on but I have wide hands, but I love the bag. And oh, well, let me show you the inside on this one because I like it so much. More feathers, so pretty. Then I have a bunch of Route 66 ones, cool old cars old what do you hmm, what's a better word um vintage cars don't know route 66 and i love this one i don't think i even noticed as i was picking it and cutting it that there was there's a land of enchantment license plate on here Here come some square ones here. This one is a very rare, very neutral one. And a square zombie one. I love these, they're so cute. I'm using one of these right now myself. Cats and yarn and more flowers. shawl size and this is the only sweater bag I've been cleaned out of these already this is also by the way one where it's all of this comes from the same fabric because the designs are just so big yep 
and now we have really come to the end thank you so much for watching i hope you're all well out there and continue to be so and until i see you again i wish you happy knitting bye bye